Now, we move over to the topic of podcasts with Adam Bowie, and the Business Development Manager at the BBC World Service. And so he's going to talk through 10 podcast trends that you need to know. And Adam, I am going to ask if you can keep as close to those 10 minutes as possible as you fly through the Zoomiverse to be with us on stage. 10 podcast trends in 10 minutes from Adam Bowie from the BBC. And then we'll be on to our final session. So over to you, Adam. Thanks very much, Ryan, and I will indeed try and uh, keep to that uh, 10 minute mark. So I'm from the BBC World Service and Business Development Manager there, and we produce a wide range of podcasts and multitude of languages from the very popular global news podcast at 13 Minutes to the Moon, most recently the really excellent Lazarus Heist, which I highly recommend. And we have advertising our podcast outside the UK, so I'll be our partners at Acast and BBC Advertising. So I'm just going to try a fancy transition. And there we go. I'm going to go you through my top 10 podcast trends in 10 minutes. It's a top, there's a lot's been going on. It's only a top 10 trends, but let's get cracking on. Okay. So the, before I start the 10, it's always just, I always like to talk about this a little bit. It's, it's internet consumption and we're a global business. So we look at it globally, even though this is a European event. The ITU says around 51% of the world's population by 2019 had internet access. So that's Roughly speaking, about 4 billion people with just under 4 billion people who still don't have. There is a big mountain to climb. And if we look at it that way, there's a large market that we still got to reach. So let's get into the top 10. And first of all is uh, Android versus iOS. There are around 4.9 billion mobile phones in use globally. So that's out of about 7.7 .7 billion people, as I just said, of which 3.8 billion are smartphones. So if you're into podcasting, or in fact, anything really digital, that's basically your addressable audience, 3.8 billion people, if we equate a smartphone to a person. But what's interesting is that despite what you probably see amongst your peer groups or in your country, most of those phones are Android. And it's interesting just hearing actually from uh, one of the previous speakers from Triton there about, about that Android thing. And that's important because it really doesn't reflect in our podcast consumption stats, which brings us straight on to number nine. And that is what we often think of as a platform battle. And it's normally presented as Apple versus Spotify. And that, that's interesting. Now there's two sets of stats recently that Pod News, the podcasting newsletter published. And the first is from Libsyn, which is a longstanding podcast host who put out, they, they published their stats. And they showed that Apple Podcasts is massively big in comparison to Spotify and basically all the other players. On the other hand, another company called Buzzsprout put out a very different set of numbers, which puts Apple and Spotify on very level numbers. Now they have a different kind of clientele, if you like, they're a newer company and maybe the kind of podcast they carry are slightly different. All this really is to say that we should just be wary about this. Different sources will provide different numbers. Apple podcast probably still is the biggest platform, but more people around the world use Android phones, which is, and Apple podcast is not available on Android. So that, that, that's an interesting thing there. And the, the one other thing to think about is that if Google podcasts was added to what they call Google mobile services, so that's, if you think about it, Gmail, Google maps, etc., in Android, everything could change even further. If it became a default podcast app in the way that Apple podcast is on iOS. Anyway, number eight, there are many podcasts and this has been mentioned a couple of times. When I checked two days ago, there were just shy of 2.3 billion, 2.3 million podcasts, according to Podcast Industry Insights, who count them. That's on Apple Podcasts and that number will have gone up by now. That represents around 54 million podcast episodes and about 32% of them are active based on the definition of having new episodes in the last 90 days. And this obviously ignores anything that's not on Apple. And that's a growing number as we see. But does it, just the question is, does the number actually matter? How many songs does Spotify have? Is it 30 million or 70 million? 70 million according to their press site. And a random number I looked up in 2018, there were 188,000 published titles, books, magazines, you name it in the UK. They're big numbers and what do they really mean? Actually, the big challenge here is really the underlying thing is discovery is for, from, from a listener challenge, from a consumer challenge, it's discovery. Anyway, move on to number seven, my, one of my favorites, celebrities. Do you know a celebrity? Do they have a podcast? If not, are they going to have a podcast? Now, Renegades with Barack Obama and Bruce Springsteen from Spotify is possibly the ultimate celebrity podcast, although maybe the Harry and Meghan one will run it a close second. I don't know. But there have been a lot. And the question is, is this a good thing or a bad thing? 
So recently, the writer and critic Fiona Sturgis wrote a piece, a really good piece actually, in The Guardian asking if celebrities are ruining podcasting. In fairness, she probably didn't write the headline, uh, sub-editors do that. But she's not the only one with a bit of a bee in her bonnet about it. A certain me wrote something on my own blog at the end of last year. And look, it's unfair to tie everyone with the same brush. There are clearly excellent podcasts produced by celebrities and some of the very best of them indeed. And Fiona's piece highlights some of them, as do I. But there's definitely been a flurry. And one celebrity interviewing their celebrity friend without anyone being particularly ruthless with the editing software isn't probably doing anyone any favours. And look, I get it. We've had lockdown. The podcast industry was possibly one of the few things you could actually get involved in. If you're a comedian, you couldn't tour and lots of the, the gigs were no longer available for you. But there are, there, there are some challenges there. Anyway, let's look at the pros and cons of celebrity podcasts. The pros, please actually broaden the appeal of podcasts. If you've never listened to a, a podcast before, and a lot of people still haven't, then a celebrity might get you involved. And they're massive in other parts of the industry, so what in popular culture, so why wouldn't they be? Comedy and entertainment are two of the biggest uh, podcast categories, and pandemic. Downside, they suck up a lot of that oxygen, and when discovery is limited, and they also, if you're paying a celebrity a lot of money, that's less money for other people to go around. And quite a lot of them aren't very good. Don't tell anyone. Look, I suspect some of, some people will discover this after a while. And if there is or isn't a pot of gold, maybe they'll move on. But things to consider. Anyway, move on. Type of time. Number six, social audio. And um, what I really mean by this is Clubhouse. Obviously it exploded onto the scene last year and then it carried on this year. Then it stalled a bit. Then they released an Android app and maybe it's growing again. But what's the problem? Anyway, th this isn't podcast, right? We're talk I'm talking about podcasts. We'll get into that, but everyone's getting involved in this area. Twitter's got Spaces. Spotify has just launched Green Room. Facebook's got its live rooms coming up. And you, know, you can see, and that's probably not a complete list of other people who are going to be getting involved into this social audio thing. The challenge is, as the Netflix Reed Hastings once said, is when saying that his um, company was competing with sleep, is that you've only got a finite amount of time to be listening to anything. And uh, recently, Mark Mulligan from Media Research expanded on this a little bit and talked about where's the space for social audio, with streaming, with podcasts, what gives, where does that, that come into play? None of us know that. And I think we're only seeing the launches of some of these things Right, at the moment, how this pans out in the medium or longer term remains to be seen. Number five, lots of people have talked about advertising today, so I'm only going to be really brief on this. But I think we are seeing a little bit of a shift away from direct response towards brand advertising. So slightly fewer offer codes in podcasts as being away, which I think is obviously growing the industry, which is great. And we're seeing probably a shift a little bit from baked in, in towards dynamic advertising. Although I've got to say, as someone who listens to a lot of American podcasts, I still hear far too many um, ads for things I can't buy in the UK. Elsewhere, this is a controversial one. Not everyone will agree with it because it's a profitable part of the business. Host reads. I think as dynamic grows, it becomes challenging to keep host reads growing because can you really expect your host to read potentially hundreds of different ads to uh, scale around the world? And then undoubtedly we're going to see a rise in programmatic, but others can probably talk about that further. Number four, thinking beyond English. We're doing this conference in this day in English, and most people think, do still think exclusively, not necessarily everyone on this call, hopefully, think about podcasting in English, but there is a whole world out there. And we're beginning to see companies now getting involved uh, beyond the English. Wondery, I think, has led the way a long way on this, and we're seeing iHeart get involved now. And definitely at the BBC World Service, we, we're thinking strongly about our international languages offering. Okay, number three, big one here, subscriptions. How to be subscriptions. How to monetize your podcast. It, it's the big new thing. I say new, we've had things like Patreon have been kicking around for a while, supporting cast makes it a little bit easier for people to support some of their favorite podcasts. And now we're seeing the likes of Apple, Spotify, Acast, Acast Plus offering their own subscription packages. But I think we just need to just rein in that excitement and enthusiasm just a little bit because look, look at your average subscription level. And I don't think by any means this is complete. This is potentially just your media spend in a very broad terms. And then you might add in all your other things that you spend money on in the subscriptions, which could be anything from coffee to food. 
And is there a limit to the number of things that consumers are willing to subscribe to? I'm not going to discount this entirely. I think it's all remains unproven at the moment. And actually for some smaller or more niche ones, it's, it can and probably will continue to be really important. But massive growth? Hmm, don't know. We'll see. Okay, number two, exclusivity. And I think this can be summarized by these two images. So a little while ago, if you wanted to listen to pretty much every podcast on the planet, this is what your phone looked like. You had one podcast app, it's probably Apple Podcasts, and you could listen to anything. Today, if you want to listen to everything, this is a bit more what it looks like because Spotify has exclusives, BBC Sounds, we have exclusives. Luminary is built on exclusives. Amazon's Audible has exclusives. Stitcher's had exclusives. Amazon is talking about now having at least Windows stuff and possibly exclusives down the line as well. It's getting a more complex ecosystem. Obviously that's what happens the norm in TV. But in video, where you've got to have, you've got to watch different things on Prime that you watch on Netflix, et cetera, or Disney Plus. But yeah, I think it's challenging, particularly for people who are used to listening to everything in one app. And there may be issues down the line with that. And also, I'm not going to get into if it's not an RS, open RSS, is it actually a podcast? That's one of the great uh, questions of our time. We just haven't got time for that today. Okay, number one, M&A, mergers and acquisitions consolidation and of course the big player in that undoubtedly Spotify is the big beast they had already bought Gimli, Anchor, Parcast then he went shopping for more most recently Pods but they bought Betty Labs which gives them their green room they bought Megaphone the ad tech company and now they're not alone I, I put this slides together a, you know a couple of months ago and I keep having to update them Sirius XM and iHeart two big American commercial radio groups have been shopping a lot Sirius just bought 99% Invisible a very popular podcast Amazon and they bought Wondery a little earlier in the year, then they've been shopping again, most recently Smartless, only last week, for quite a lot of money. And then actually in Europe, uh, something else has just been bought by Sony. So there's a lot of acquisitions. And then you've got mid-tier below that. You've got companies like Vox or The Athletic and, and plenty of other ones that potentially are on the sales board. So there's undoubtedly going, there has been consolidation. It won't always work, but some of it will. And there's going to be more consolidation. The challenges are going to be the smaller players because um, these big ones suck out the oxygen of publicity, and they have the one the ones with the big they the ones with the big PR budgets and the ability to make those podcasts visible. If you own your own platform and you place your own podcast exclusively or non-exclusively on that platform, then you've got an enormous advantage over those who don't have that luxury. Anyway, that's it. Sorry, my, I know my time is up, and transition back to me. Hope that was useful. Thank you. Thanks, Adam. That's brilliant. Really appreciate you giving us yeah that quick update. It was amazing. So thank you very much.